Welcome back to Classic Cinema Channel. As you all know about racism and equal rights in American society in the second half of the 20th century, To Kill a Mockingbird is considered one of the greatest works of all time. Classic literary and cinematic works of American culture with profound messages of justice, compassion and understanding. Let's explore together. Richard Hale, born in 1892, brought Nathan Radley to life with his portrayal in To Kill a Mockingbird. At 69, he strutted onto the screen, making Radley the neighbourhood's mysterious enforcer. Sadly, he left us at 88 in 1981, but his cinematic legacy remains, a testament to his knack for captivating audiences with his compelling performances. Like a fine wine, Hale's talent only grew richer with time, leaving behind a trail of cinematic masterpieces that continue to mesmerise viewers to this day. Raise a glass to Richard Hale, the man who made us both shiver in fear and lean in with curiosity at the mysterious neighbour next door. Frank Overton, born in 1918, graced the screen with his portrayal of Sheriff Hectate in To Kill a Mockingbird. Despite leaving us too soon at the age of 49 due to a heart attack in 1967, Overton's legacy in the world of acting remains as steadfast as his character's commitment to justice. At 44, he brought Tate to life with a charisma that could charm the birds out of the trees. His performance not only exuded certainty and credibility, but also painted a vivid picture of the sheriff in Maycomb's small society. Though he may have left this world prematurely, Overton's contributions to cinema continue to inspire and entertain. Here's to Frank Overton, the man who proved that even in the wild west of Maycomb, justice could be served with a twinkle in the eye and a badge on the chest. Rosemary Murphy, born in 1925, lit up the screen with her portrayal of Morty Atkinson in To Kill a Mockingbird. At 37, she brought a strong and influential presence to Maycomb's small society, making her character multi-dimensional and relatable to audiences far and wide. Despite her remarkable talent and contributions to the world of acting, Murphy never walked down the aisle, choosing instead to dedicate her life to her craft. Sadly, she passed away alone in 2014 at the age of 89, battling esophageal cancer. Though she may have departed this world, Murphy's legacy lives on through her unforgettable performances and the impact she made on audiences. Here's to Rosemary Murphy, the woman who showed us the power of strength, grace and resilience, both on and off the screen. Ruth White brought her brilliance to the role of Mrs. DuBose in To Kill a Mockingbird, portraying the grumpy old widow who wasn't afraid to yell at kids like Jem, Scout and Dill. At 48, White breathed life into the character, making her an integral part of the story's message of confronting social prejudice in the American South. Tragically, Ruth White's life was cut short when she passed away at the relatively young age of 55 in 1969. The exact cause of her sudden passing isn't widely documented, but it's a reminder of how fragile life can be, even for those who bring so much vibrancy and depth to the characters they portray. Despite her untimely departure, White's legacy endures through her memorable performances, reminding us of the impact she made on the world of cinema. If you love this video, please give us a like and subscribe. Paul Fix brought Gravitas to the role of Judge Taylor in To Kill a Mockingbird, portraying a figure filled with both authority and injustice. Born in 1901, Fix was 61 when he delivered a performance that exuded maturity and trustworthiness. With his talent, Fix crafted a character that resonated with audiences, leaving a lasting impression on the message of justice and humanity in society. Despite the character's flaws, Fix's portrayal added depth and complexity to the story. Sadly, 
fixer's journey came to an end in 1983, at the age of 82, when he succumbed to kidney failure. Though he may have left this world, his legacy lives on through his memorable performances, reminding us of the enduring power of his craft. Raise a gavel to Paul Fix, the actor who left an indelible mark on the courtroom of cinematic history. Robert Duvall made his feature film debut as Arthur Boo Radley in To Kill a Mockingbird, portraying the mysterious and mystical character with depth and intrigue. Despite his limited screen time, Duvall's performance left a lasting impression on audiences. Boo Radley's role in the story's development brought forth deep sentiments and philosophies about understanding and humanity in society, resonating with viewers long after the credits rolled. In 2024, at the age of 93, Duval had experienced four marriages but remained childless. Despite his personal life, his contributions to cinema, especially in his portrayal of Boo Radley, cemented his place as a legendary actor. Brock Peters brought depth and sincerity to the role of Tom Robinson in To Kill a Mockingbird portraying the heartbreaking plight of a black man unjustly accused of raping a white girl. Born in 1927, Peters was 35 when he took on this impactful role. His portrayal not only highlighted critical human rights and social issues, but also enhanced the film's significance in confronting prejudice and racism. With his talent, Peters made Tom Robinson's struggle relatable and poignant, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. Sadly, Peters passed away in 2005 at the age of 78, but his legacy as an American actor endures. Here's to Brock Peters, the man who used his craft to shed light on injustice, reminding us all of the importance of empathy and equality, even in the face of adversity. Colin Wilcox breathed life into the character of Myella Violet Yule in To Kill a Mockingbird, portraying a heartbroken young woman facing the harsh realities of a prejudiced society. Born in 1935, Wilcox was just 27 when she took on this challenging role, showcasing her sincere and poignant performance. As Mayella, Wilcox highlighted the importance of humanity and shed light on the social issues addressed in the film. Her portrayal captured the struggles and pressures faced by women in a society rife with prejudice. Tragically, Wilcox's journey came to an end in 2009 when she passed away from brain cancer at the age of 74. Despite her untimely departure, her contributions to cinema and her memorable performance as Myella remain etched in the hearts of audiences. May she rest in peace, her legacy enduring through her impactful work on screen. This guy was only 14 when he participated in this classic movie. That is Philip Alford, an American actor born in 1948. He plays Jem Finch, Scout Finch's brother. In the face of a rural society full of prejudice and discrimination, Jem is the one who supports and protects his sister from difficulties. Philip Alford's acting highlights family love in a complex context. In 2023, he will be 75 years old, have retired from his acting career and become a talented businessman. James Anderson took on the role of the dark and villainous Bob Ewell in To Kill a Mockingbird, with a talent that added uniqueness and depth to the character. Born in 1921, Anderson was 41 years old during filming, infusing the role with tension and intrigue. As Bob Yule, Anderson portrayed a character who caused unnecessary trouble for the Finch family, adding layers to the story's conflict. His performance brought out the darkness of Yule's personality, leaving a lasting impact on audiences. Tragically, Anderson's life was cut short when he passed away suddenly at the age of 48 in 1969, succumbing to a heart attack. Despite his untimely departure, his contribution to the film remains a testament to his acting prowess and the indelible mark he left on cinematic history.
This little girl is one of the main characters in the film and also the daughter of Atticus Finch. At just 10 years old, Mary Badham created an adorable and mischievous image of a Girl Scout living in a small town. Born in 1952, she was nominated for an Oscar for her role in this film for her natural and pure performance. At 72 in 2024, she has retired from acting and is enjoying a happy life with her family. If you're a new viewer and enjoy this film, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you. Certainly, everyone here must have neighbours who scrutinise, judge and are curious about your personal life. Alice Ghostly took on the role of such a neighbour. Playing Stephanie Crawford, a nosy neighbour who gossips in the neighbourhood, Ghostly brings complexity and intrigue to the character. She was an American actress, born in 1923 and was 39 years old when she joined the film. She passed away in 2007 after a prolonged battle with cancer and a series of strokes at the age of 84 Gregory Peck, born in 1916, solidified his place as one of Hollywood's greatest actors through his portrayal of Atticus Finch in To Kill a Mockingbird. At 46, he embodied the role of the intellectual lawyer and exemplary father, infusing Atticus with a calm and compassionate demeanour that resonated with audiences worldwide. Atticus Finch transcended the screen to become an icon of justice and humanity, thanks in large part to Peck's masterful performance. It earned him an Oscar for Best Actor, a testament to the influence and talent he brought to his acting career. In 2003, at the age of 87, Gregory Peck bid farewell to this world at his home, succumbing to bronchopneumonia. Though he may have left us, his legacy as a cinematic legend and champion of human decency lives on, inspiring generations to come. Rest in peace, Gregory Peck, the epitome of grace and talent in the world of cinema. John Magna, born in 1952, left a lasting impact on audiences with his portrayal of Charles Baker Dill Harris in To Kill a Mockingbird. Despite his young age of nine, Magna showcased remarkable acting talent. Embodying Dill's vivacity and curiosity as a close friend to Scout and Jem, tragically, Magna's life was cut short at the tender age of 42 in 1995. He passed away due to complications related to AIDS, leaving behind a legacy of talent and potential unfulfilled. Despite appearing in only a few scenes, Megna's performance resonated deeply with viewers, cementing his place as a beloved character in the film. His openness about his sexuality also added to his legacy as a trailblazer. May his memory live on as a reminder of the brilliance he brought to the screen and the importance of acceptance and understanding. Estelle Evans made her mark on To Kill a Mockingbird at 56, embodying the role of Calpurnia, the devoted housekeeper and caregiver for the Finch family. Born in 1906 and passing away in 1985, Evans brought sincerity and responsibility to her portrayal, breathing life into the character and enriching the film's profound human rights message. With her outstanding acting talent, Evans made Calpurnia realistic and vibrant, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. However, the exact cause of her passing at the age of 78 isn't widely documented, underscoring the transient nature of life and the importance of cherishing the legacies left behind by talented individuals like Estelle Evans. May she rest in peace, her contributions to cinema forever remembered. To Kill a Mockingbird is a profoundly humane and meaningful film. After a long day of work, come to Classic Cinema Channel to unwind. Remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on our new videos. Thank you for watching.